and soldiers marching us to Well, there's a lot going on in the world at the moment, and we know that Putin has his Satan too pointing towards Britain at the moment. So we are in a bit of a, if I say, pickle. But we're going to focus now on some intercession for our country. Well, this is the Constitution Keepers Programme, and we know that as a country, we have turned our back on God and I had put in my heart for this intercession today um, chapter 7 of 2 Chronicles and verse 14 and a bit later on as well so I'm just going to read that to you as part of this intercession God says in his word if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attend to the prayer that is made in this place. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. And as for thee, if thou wilt walk before me, as David thy father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded thee, and shalt observe my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom according as I have covenanted with David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man to be a ruler in Israel. But if ye turn away and forsake my statutes and commandments, which I have set before you and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will pluck them up by the, by the roots out of my land, which I have given them. And this house, which I have sanctified for my name, will I cast out of my sight and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. Well, we have turned away from the Lord and all these things that are happening to our nation it's trying to get our attention to turn back to him there are so many things so many things spiritually happening out there and we as brothers and sisters in Christ need to pray for our nation we need to pray for those in authority that they may see what they're doing wrong and that they themselves too turn back to our Lord and Saviour Lord Jesus Christ all these things, like I mentioned before about the, um, the, the Satan too that Putin has pointing towards us, that is a very scary thought that, that, that is, you know, is pointing to us. We need to, we need to call upon our Lord. We need to listen to what he says in his word we need to turn back to him many many years ago this country was much stronger when more and more people were going to church were studying the word and listening to the word and as we've fallen away as a country from the Lord and turned our back to him the situation is in this country has got worse and worse and worse and it's getting worse and we know from the word that things are going to get worse life is going to become harder and harder for the ordinary folk people are going to they're going to be you know starving they're going to be leaving their homes all the things that we hope will never ever happen are an actual possibility now with the way things are going in our world and in our nation. So we need to draw closer and closer 
to him and as we draw closer to him it says in his word that he will draw close to us too and that's what we have to do and we need to talk to him every day but we also need to sit quietly and listen for that small still small voice talking to us to give us direction in our lives and what to do to help each other help our nation and it's not just our nation our nation is you know, the commonwealth is part of this nation in a way as well and we have to think about those people all over the world who are part of this commonwealth that Britain set up and we have to stick together, help one another. Because they're suffering, people in those countries are suffering too. All those things that are happening in, say, India, and in some of these African countries, things that we thought will never happen here in Britain. As I say, there's a real possibility that the suffering that they've been facing over the years the persecution that they've been facing over the years, that that's going to come here too. It's already increasing. All the more reason for us to draw closer and closer to him. So let us all draw closer to him daily. Let us talk to him, ask for his guidance, and then act on his guidance. There are many things that need to be broken down and if we're all praying together and asking you know asking him together there's strength in numbers so Constitution has been <laughs> totally forgotten. Young people have no idea of what it's all about. These things need to be brought back and taught to our young ones. The spiritual in our constitution is above the temporal, yet in the lives of British people, spiritual is hardly even evident, but we need to bring this all back, so we need to make that effort to do that, and may he help us to do that, may we hear his voice, and through all the changes that are going on in our world, and in our country, he is the constant, he never changes. Is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we can count on Him. We can rely on Him. We can trust Him and have faith in Him that He will help us to do what we need to do for Him. And He will give us that guidance. We have to be as he was in this world, our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. He's our mediator between us and God the Father. And we need to be as he is, as I say, in this world. So let's make that effort 
to to keep drawing closer and closer to him to spend time with him not just talking but also listening to us one thing talking to him but we have to listen to him as well because as I read in 2 Chronicles 7 when they turned away from him things went really bad and he's promised that if we are obedient to him that he will bless and he is a God who keeps his promises he's faithful and he'll do what he says so let's call to help us in our fight for constitution Give us the instructions that we need to. Guide us in the way we need to go and what we need to do for you now in the, in the situation that we find ourselves in, in Britain and in the Commonwealth. You know everything that's going on. May your thoughts, which aren't our thoughts, become our thoughts so that we can do the work that you have for us to do in these times, in these end times that we're living through now. We're going to be That's excuse me. That's actually a Brian him. Dear Brian, he's in hospital right now. I vow you want to given to Pamela. Yes. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you, we, we do indeed know that you, you were saying? You need to draw, keep, keep drawing closer to him. Yes, of course. And he's working in us and through us anyway. And that is right. We just need to listen. We need his word. We need the word of God. And the word of God is even contained in the coronation service. And the constitution of this nation is based on the word of God. So as, as Pamela has interceded, so we stand with her in that, in the name of Jesus, that we do indeed, he said when we grow close to him, he will grow closer to us as well, as you said. And we thank you everybody, we know that we need to stand together and fight for this constitution, war in the spirit, fight the good fight of faith. And those things will come to pass. Everything that happens in the spirit is real. It's, it's actually the reality. It's in the spirit. It's in the real. The other stuff is just superficial. We need to go deep into the spirit because the weapons of our warfare are the most important, the most important of which is the word because that is our sword. And without that, Satan always has a go in our, in our minds. So we need to destroy. Amen. And also, the, the web, that's right. The weapons of our warfare, as Paul said as well in another letter, are not carnal, but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. And every high thought of an imagination you know this one, it sets itself up against God. Yeah. And, uh, one of these days, there might actually be 
Are we, are we ready yet by any chance? No, we're not ready. Okay, okay. So um, there's a wonderful uh, song coming up shortly. I love this song. It's I Vow to Be My Country. It's beautiful. I vow to thee, my country, all earthly things above, entire and whole and perfect, the service of my love. The love that asks no questions, the love that stands the test, that lays upon the altar the dearest and the best. The love that never falters, the love that pays the price and that is the most. That's the highest love, the love that pays the price. Agape, agape love. Yeah, agape love. And the love that makes him dawn to that fin again, final sacrifice again. That's demonstrated through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who gave his life up for us. So let's sing this wonderful hymn. You know, I can just see me now. I can just come <laughs> down to her height. <laughs> Pamela, you did very well. That you are employed week after week to do intercession on this program. I have to come down. I have to come very low because this Pamela is a wee soul. <laughs> but don't put it away. We're going to have you sing it again. It. I tell you, of all the songs Pamela sings, I vow to thee, my country, is the very best. It is so beautiful. It is absolutely, even though I got the CD wrong, it was worth waiting for. It really was. And I tell you, Pamela, you sing this with all your heart. It's so beautiful. Sing it again. In fact, would you sing it twice again? Because I'd like the devil to be really annoyed. Because I believe you're annoying the devil by singing this song. So let's hear it again twice. Amen. There you go. Twice.
questions a love that stands the test that lays upon the altar the dearest and the best the love that never falters a love that pays the price the love that makes undaunted the final sacrifice and there's another country I've heard of long ago most dear to them that love her most dear to them that know we may not count her on Hallelujah. You know, Pamela, it's, it's hard to say this, but you're making me cry. There's something about what's going on in Pamela's life which is making me cry. And I, I, I will tell this to you publicly, that it's the Lord who is pruning you. And what he does when he has a beautiful flower, to make it even more beautiful, he cuts off the dead heads. And we have been through the same process you are going through many, many times. Mm -hmm. That if you look at the word, he sees us as part of his flowers in the garden. And every good gardener knows that when you get a beautiful flower, there comes a season which the flower has got to be cut off so that next season, a more beautiful flower. And that's what's happening. John 15, Lindsay says. 
You can get it all there. He watereth the garden. He does all of these things. But I'm telling you this. You will be made more beautiful by what's going on at the moment. And no one can teach you this. It's impossible to be taught all this again. And when you think, the Lord's speaking to me, and he's saying to suggest to you about a patriotic hymn sing. Yeah. When we bring the hymn sing back to do a patriotic hymn sing. And he's telling me to sing some of the American patriotic sing songs. You never done those before. Yeah, no, <laughs> we do have. We got to, we got to increase the. Battle, uh, uh, well, with the battle yeah, hymn of the Republic, yeah. you have, yeah. yeah. Um, but there's a beautiful song um, about America, the beautiful. Yeah. And so I think we can learn these, and do some more patriot because the anointing is so strong. Yeah. When you're singing that song, I vow to thee, my country, it just cracks me up. In fact, it cracks me up so much. Can I ask you to do it again? <laughs> and it is so beautiful. I, I, I tell you, she sung on with Christian soldiers wonderfully. But there's something when you so sing, I vow, because you've sung it before, there's something happens when Pamela sings, I vow to thee, my country. I mean, do you feel it yourself? Yes, I do. I, when I first you carry on. singing this song, I couldn't stop crying. So there's definitely something about, about it. So it, It's just so, so, so wonderful, Pamela. Let's have it again. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. You know, you wondered if you were going to do any good in intercession today. But what you've done is broken down strongholds with the singing of that song. You see, you sometimes think, oh, what am I going to do and all of that. What you've done is broken down strongholds. And that's what intercession does when we become as him. And it's as if you were singing the words of the Spirit. In fact, you were. And, and you know, 
This is the first time Pam has done intercession like this, I think, isn't it? And, and, and it's normal to start thinking. That's normal. And you know we're called to move by the Spirit, and we've encouraged Pamela. But what you've done is you hit something huge tonight. And that God has called you to intercession. Because you've got underneath it all is a big heart. And what the Lord's doing to you is actually molding you into what he wants you to be. And he is the potter, you are the clay. And it's really hard when that happens. Really hard. Because it breaks you, it takes away your own thinking and replaces it with his you're not your own you're bought with a price and when it comes to the intercession for the next god told me he said don't have lindsay do the intercession he said have pamela i don't know why and and we are to build you up and train you up into the ministry and what happens here is this the there's times which you just get deadheaded by God and then he builds you up. And this is going to be a season of real study of the word because the word is the manure you need. The good gardener knows puts the manure on. If you see what I mean, if the word's ever been described that way, religious people will go mad, but never mind about that. They go mad anyway. But it's to help you grow and it gives good soil and the things which affect you in your life he just digs them out forgets all about them and you become miracle grow we got some of that out there he just put it all around her feet but he's talking spiritual miracle grow so i'm telling you you have broken down strongholds tonight. And, and I've been an excellent intercessor so I can follow. But that song, I think, is your theme song. I really, really do. And we need to look at patriotic songs, uh, the Battle Hymn of the Republic, Land of Hope and Glory. Amazing Grace is a patriotic song because it's all part of the heritage of our country. And much as he say about our country, it was our country who stopped the slave trade. And you know, it, it was a horrendous thing and John Newton got saved by the power of God. And the slave trade ended. It was God who stopped us through his saints. And in America, with the civil rights movement, with Martin Luther King, a Baptist minister. So it's not Black Lives Matter who've done anything except cause trouble. It's the saints of God who have brought peace. And that's been one of the promises of our constitution, to have the peace and tranquility of the realm. And that's what we're going to talk about now. Pamela, thank you so much. It's over. It's over. You got through it. <laughs> it's just it just makes me I'm just crying my eyes out and the way she sings this it just makes makes me cry the intercession tonight was very special because it was Pamela's first and we are new to just let her go with us. And have I got some music playing in the back? Just bear with me just one moment. You'll see a black screen going in a moment. Yeah, I think I'm picking up Pamela's microphone here. And CD2 is still going. <laughs> there was some music going in the background. I could tell by looking at our screen here. And I have to tell you this. That's it. The 
see, I can tell by looking at the screen what's going on. I said, there's something going on here. And uh, his music, you, you were hearing him's music whilst I was speaking. Uh, but now I just want to be quiet before the Lord. We've spoken many times over our country and given many warnings. And that hymn has to be sung over and over in our country. You see, Pamela mentioned Satan too, the name given to a missile which President Putin has pointing at Britain. <sighs> this might be hard for you to take. But I believe it's God's will it's pointing at Britain. And I don't believe it's for nothing it's been called Satan too. You see, the consequences of making a promise to God and not keeping it are horrendous. And I'll prove it to you. Don't say, well, you're quoting Old Testament. The very constitution, the very coronation service is Judeo-Christian based on the coronation of Solomon. Hence, all that is in the Old Testament for not keeping the law, the punishment of which is given to those who disobey. Now, you might say, in the New Testament, we have mercy, yes, but mercy comes with an if clause. Throughout the whole Bible, it's about God's people obeying him and keeping their promises. And for those who keep their promises, we read in Deuteronomy 28, all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. They shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in good in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of the ground, in the land with which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in season, to bless all the work of thine hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Does that apply to Britain? There was a huge pestilence which brought the conditions for this nation to borrow. Print money, it didn't have like monopoly money. The consequences of what's called quantitative easing are for everybody to see. And pestilence after pestilence has come upon the land. Why? Will you promise to your power, cause law and justice and mercy to be executed in all judgments? Said the queen, I will. Will you, to the utmost of your power, maintain the laws of God and the true profession of the gospel? Will you, to the utmost of your power, maintain in the United Kingdom the Protestant reform religion established by law? Will you maintain and preserve inviolably the settlements of the Church of England, the very first line of which this is the Elizabethan settlement? 
the very first line, which is the act of supremacy restored by the first Elizabeth, being to increase virtue in Christ's religion. Can you say in the year, years of the 70 years of the Queen's reign, has there been an increase in virtue of Christ's religion? The doctrine, worship, discipline, and government thereof as by law. And will you preserve unto the bishops and clergy of England, to the churches committed their charge, all such rights and privileges, as by law do or shall appertain to them or any of them? All this I promise to do. I wrote to the Secretary of State for Scotland, pointing out the grants and government money are given to LGBT. Now, I'm not going to comment about the rights and wrongs of that. Why should I? Because it wasn't a complaint about that in relation to what I was writing to the Secretary of State about. You can argue that thy financing LGBT, you're disobeying the laws of God. Queen promised to uphold the laws of God. But I'll let you decide upon that. My point was not that, although I believe it's prevalent to what God has got to say to the nation, particularly the scripture verse which declares God resists the proud. Take note. But it was not that I wrote to the Secretary of State about. I asked him a question. With all this money, by grants and by government contracts going to LGBT, how much in comparison is given to charities upholding the Queen's promises to God? I received no reply. In Wales, I had been on street stores with the Secretary of State for Wales, which David Jones was in 2016. His wife came to me. I'm a Christian, Dame, I'm a Christian. And indeed she is, and indeed she was, as David is. David on occasion, rang Lindsay for prayer in relation to his activity. Pray for me. One thing he always did was reply to an email or a letter. Always. Not the case with this Secretary of State in Scotland. He wouldn't answer me. I thought it read that authority was given to the clergy of the realm. If you want to be technical about it, I'm an ordained Anglican clergyman too. So I come right under the Constitution. And I don't even get a reply. I also don't get replied from church groupings. Do I try to bring this information to? I wrote to a Reverend Stephen Ogston of the Church of Scotland who had visited Brian Mason in the Galloway Hospital, thanking him for the visit, but sharing with him our heart to restore the Scots Kirk. We received no reply. I wrote to the faith mission, concerned they had bowed down to textual criticism and would suffer the same fate of the primitive Methodists when they did likewise. 
And again, I got no reply. It is interesting that those who uphold this get no reply. And Jesus is knocking on the door of our nation, our nation and is getting no reply. The Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods. There are major shortages in the shops. Major. And there is a coming worldwide famine. Major. The cost of fuel is unbelievable. We have an oil tank here to run our central heating and hot water system. To fill it up now, about 1,500 pounds. It's unbelievable. To fill a small car, 100 pounds. Interest rates are going up. I was reading in one publication that some with mortgages have an increase of 2,500 per month on their mortgage. That is in the southeastern end of the market, I would suggest. But people are not going to be able to pay. People will start becoming homeless. And all this is warned about for nations who break their covenant promises. And Babylon is knocking on the door. We're already under the control of a Chinese empire. Controlling country after country all over the world. Pamela was right in her intercession over the huge dangers of what is going on in Ukraine. Now, what is the solution for all of this? Well, in the words of my Sunday school chorus, there's a way back to God from the dark paths of sin. Doors open, you may go in. Where do you begin? At the cross of Calvary. May I suggest to this nation, instead of investing in pride, you invest in sackcloth and ashes. Talking spiritually. Lay down your sin at the cross. For we are knocking at the door of the curses of Deuteronomy. But if you do not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, cursed shalt thou be in a city, the field, basket, the store, fruit of thy body, the fruit of thy land, There's a massive curse upon this country. In the Queen's reign, the figures are nine and a half million lives. One unborn baby destroyed every three minutes in the Queen's reign from 1967, that is. There was no legal abortion before that. Fruit of thy land, all thy labours, shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. Thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed away, that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes. 
The Lord shall smite thee in the knees, in the legs, sore botched that cannot be healed from the sole of thy feet. And he shall send a pestilence which shall cleave unto thee, smite thee with consumption, fever, inflammations, extreme burning with the sword. Have we seen the pictures of monkey pox? Which I believe explicitly targets the LGBT community. community. Now I'll just get accused of being homophobic. I'm not. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him. That includes heterosexuals and homosexuals. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. But what the Lord does, he molds us into his image. We have politicians today who don't know the difference between a man and a woman, even, I believe, the leader of the opposition. I suggest we go back to Genesis and understand that God created man and woman in his image. You know, the consequences of Attacking the church in the way the nation's done. Street preachers have been arrested one after another and harassed one after another. And all they've been doing is proclaiming the gospel the queen promised on oath to proclaim. I cannot tell you the horrific circumstances which are there facing our country. I can only commend the Saviour to you and the promise for his church, for his people in Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And so what's all around us, there is horror. There is a clothing for the people of God. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. My God, has it been noisy. It's been covered on practically every media platform like never before. But what is the promise of God for his people? He shall cover thee with his feathers under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side. 10,000 at thy right hand, it shall not come near thee. There shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. You know why? On the lintels and talking spiritually in this building is the blood of Jesus. I don't have to convince you that the Queen, successive governments, and the people of our nation, sadly, 
have not obeyed God. And the Queen in 1953 made promises on behalf of governments and the people that indeed they would, and the time has come for the price to be paid. But for those who've given their lives to Jesus, there is the clothing of protection, his feathers. Are you coming to the Savior tonight? Are you going to ask him into your heart tonight? Are you going to repent of your sin? For without him, the noisome pestilence shall indeed cleave unto thee. The famine will be all around you. But for those covered by the blood of Jesus, by the feathers of our Lord, it shall not come nigh us. And should the Queen repent, should governments repent, then that which is promised at the beginning of Deuteronomy 28 shall be prevalent for our land. But if not, we can expect horrific consequences of disobeying God. If you hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God, then none of these diseases. But if you shall not hearken, if you shall disobey God, the queen on oath promising to increase virtue, the anointing, to repress, extirpate, or error, heresy, enormities, abuses, conserve the peace, unity, and tranquility of the realm, and repress the infiltration of foreign laws and systems into our nation, to maintain the statutes, laws, and customs, law and justice and mercy, the laws of God maintained, ongoing profession of the gospel, the Protestant Reformed religion, rights and privileges being given to the church to ensure the constitution is upheld. And in answer to my question from the Secretary of State for Scotland, who I would suggest quite possibly is of another order, of another initiation, and I only suggest this, for why should he not reply to the question of the resources of the nation not being used in relation to giving grants and support to those whom the Queen promised would have authority to ensure her promises were kept? I believe there's a new world order the Bible calls him the God of this world. David Spangler, connected with a place which I understand Prince Charles got connected with, the Fintorn Foundation, said this, no one will enter the new world order unless he or she shall make a pledge to worship Lucifer. No one will enter the new age unless he will take a Luciferian initiation. And I would suggest to our nation that another oath has been made on behalf of the country, not to the God of heaven, but to the God of this world and the consequences of such an oath is being paid today. Lindsay, will you come forward as we conclude our program, thanking Pamela for a really inspiring intercession 
and we look forward to her coming back next week and developing this wonderful art. Lindsay, well, at this I point, just, uh, Lindsay came on in the recording for live stream and gave a major intercession, which we can't show here. An intercession against a worldwide stronghold, which is so sensitive, we can't show it here. But what was being shown on this recording for live stream, Constitution Keepers, was the importance of keeping the covenant with God and the horrific cost of rejecting the covenant. The beginning of the program, Pamela, opened up her heart and beautifully sung I vow to thee my country and how our nation has turned away oh father we're weeping and crying before you today of how our nation has rejected you we invite you to give your tithes and offerings to help us get this message out you can see our website at www dot constitutionkeepers.org <clears throat> where you will find GiveNet, Stewardship GiveNet and PayPal buttons. Also that can be found at ecctv.org. We have a covenant with the United States. We have a covenant with our Commonwealth. And as I plead with you now in the name of Jesus, I ask you to be able to give from your heart in relation to your offering today. And we thank you that the huge bills we have at the moment are covered, Lord Jesus. And we praise you and give you glory that Jesus is alive today. And we so appreciate you, our hearts being to pass on this message of the British Constitution and our dedication towards the Commonwealth and the Mayflower Compact with the United States of America. You can contact us today, become a Constitution Keeper Service member. And contact us at 01492 or 07542 565415 from overseas 0044 1492 53451 or 0044 7542 565415. This is the Bible College of Wales original vision, Whitton, Scotland, UK, DG88NS. And should the Lord be leading you to write a check? The check is to the Bible College of Wales. Oh Lord, we thank you and give you praise and all the glory for what has been a wonderful meeting. And we give Jesus all the praise and all the glory. <laughs>